activities. And so it has been uh, linked to the old tire fire game past royalties over the years, but we've kind of done you know our own thing. But the royalty always shows up. And of course, the royalty also gets eaten for free. Thank you. Okay, um, anybody here from Camp Roberts? I don't see anybody. I don't move on the staff and committee reports, receive the file, general manager. Uh, we have one thing for you tonight that you don't already know. We had three people apply for the three vacant, or the three board seats that will be vacant in December. Uh, so uh, Mr. Ashley Sangster, Mr. John Gray, and Mr. Brendan B, uh, B will be the oncoming board members. And I hope to see them at some future meetings between now and December. But uh, there won't be an election. They'll just be appointed by the board of supervisors. Uh, District Council, have you anything tonight? Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, District Utilities. And uh, you guys have my report and everything. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Utilities. Oh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, it says moving forward with the household hazardous waste facility. What is that? Pardon me? The household hazardous waste facility in conjunction with the IWMA. So we've been working with the IWMA for years and years and years to try to get a household hazardous waste facility you know, placed at the wastewater treatment plant. Basically, that would enable um, people from this area to bring paint or other hazardous waste, batteries, you know, normal household stuff. Um, they would be able to bring it there and leave it for free. Um, it's a program run through IWMA where they they have a contract with um, Cleaner Earth, and Cleaner Earth manages that that facility. They take care of it all, and they load it all up and send it off to a recycling facility where the paints mix and reuse sometimes, or the the chemicals are uh, disposed of appropriately instead of just on the side. Right, so right now it's in Templeton is the, is the closest one, right? So there's one in Templeton, there's one at the Paso Landfill, and there's one at Heritage Ranch. Those are the closest ones. Okay. Um, the one, actually the one in Templeton I don't think is open anymore. No, it's not. Uh, and, and Heritage Ranch is only open to residents at Heritage Ranch. So we'll be I just went to the one in Templeton uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. That? It's not the dump. Oh, the Chicago Great Landfill? That's it. Yeah. So, that's so there's one there. Different? No, I think mean, it's, you say Templeton, I think of the CSD. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so there's one at the Pass Rolls Landfill, and there's one at the Chicago, uh, Chicago Great Landfill. Okay. Uh, but we would be the only one that is not a part of the landfill. And how it's, soon would that be planning to do that? Um, I have some base that need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Three years of stuff. So they, it's the money is approved through IWMA. They have the money to buy it and put it there. They have the money to manage it. It just have they have to get their staff has to get their stuff together to move forward with it and get it ordered and get it permitted before it's brought here. Jeez, lovely beer. So, I mean, like I said, it's been a couple years since we started working on this. Yeah. They've had a lot of changeover, but they've basically been sitting on the money to pay for San Miguel's hazardous waste facility for probably at least three years. Oh okay, well, that would be nice to see that. Um, so, and then the other thing is coordinating that community clean up. In September, what date is that? Um, it's. I think it's the 20th and 21st. 20th and 21st, yeah. Is so it it's a Friday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. 20th and 21st. <clears throat> okay. So, do people take it to a location or are so people that come and come by? The details are being worked out, but potentially it's, it'll be here in this parking lot. So people will be able to come here on Friday okay. for the majority of the day and drop stuff off. And then on Saturday, it's potentially just in the morning. 
Okay, and then what types of things are you receiving? So we'll bring household trash, furniture, um, pretty much anything that you would throw away from your house, other than other than hazardous things and tires. And so no tires. No tires. Okay. If you have tires, um, you can take them to a tire shop, and then some places will take them. Um, Sand or garbage will pick up some. But there are, there's laws on how many you can transport without being a tire hauler, mm -hmm. which is kind of the hard way. But yeah. So basically, the our cleanups, we can take anything that you would throw away normally from your home. Okay. But not tires, not paint, you know, no hazardous things, no tires. Um, okay. We do take recycling, so metal or you know, plastic. Things that can be recycled through your normal recycling, we can we can take that too. Okay, what are the hours on Friday? Um, we haven't established everything oh, yet, so okay. once we have everything worked out, we'll send out a, a notice. We'll end up. Okay, I'll load up the truck. Yeah. It's coming. Mr. Dodds, <coughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, Mr. Dodds, how has the mattress and e-waste recycling been? So e-waste is pretty slow. Okay. The mattresses actually have kind of been picking up. We, we've opened it up to taking it more days. It was just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And although those are our official days, we still take, we do take it uh, five times a week. So um, with having staff full-time at the treatment plant, we're able to have people drop it off on a pallet in the parking lot, then our staff, when they're available, can move it into the treatment. So we've actually been getting quite a bit more. Um, the trailer we have holds 100 and something mattresses, and it takes us like four or five months to fill that. So, and a lot of mattresses. I'm very proud of, this, of the program and, and uh, the fact that it's been collecting mattresses instead of them ending up on our streets. Um, that was one of the things I remember very vividly when I first got on this board was how many mattresses would accumulate on some of the vacant lots in this community. Yeah, unfortunately, it still happens, right. but we try to try to minimize that. Absolutely. Anything else, Dr. No. Yes, I have a comment, uh, or maybe a question. Uh, in a way, I know that you said a couple of meetings ago when I questioned you about all the honey trucks going down there and dumping their waste and everything. And it never did get an answer. Are we making any money on that? And so, in a way, my next question is: and you, you told the board at that time we was the only place in the county that would take waste from these honey trucks and so on. And so now, you you want to set up where we're going to accept hazardous waste? at our treatment plant. I mean, to, to me, the Sam Gill, the, I think it's a nice little town. It's not a dumping site for everybody else in the county. You know, and we shouldn't be required to do it. You know, but it seems like, oh, well, bring it, bring it over here, we'll take care of it. You know, especially that has hazardous waste material. We don't need to be involved in that. So just just as a something to make a case for taking that kind of material, if you go up on K Street up next to the, the uh, hotel, there's probably ten cans of paint sitting next to a tree. So by us having the ability to either with our staff pick it up off the street or have a place for people in the community just to bring it, drop it off at no cost. No cost to them, no cost to the district. It makes the district a cleaner place. To your first point, in regards to the septic trucks, we don't take material from, you know, quote unquote, honey huts. So from portable toilets, we don't take that material at all. That has a lot of extra chemicals in it that will destroy the biology of our plant. And we do not want to risk that in any means. However, accepting septage waste on the limited basis that we do is making money for the district. It's offsetting some of the costs for the uh, 
the current processing, uh, the sludge waste, and uh, for the power, it's basically a hands-off thing for the district. It takes very little um, staff time. They really take care of their own space there. And they actually make it easier for us to do our job while paying us to do it. So we do make money. I believe that the last time we talked about this, I said somewhere in the neighborhood of $60,000. But I think last year, at the end of the year, we ended up grossing around $120,000. And it cost us maybe $100,000 to actually deal with it. Between all the sampling, all the facility, and you know its portion of power, and its portion of sludge management. So it by no means is losing money. They don't have to bring it here. If they, and the people who do, or the companies that do bring it to us, they are well aware that if they bring something to us that's, that damages our facility, they damage our facility, that they're no longer allowed in our facility. So although you are correct, we don't have to do any of this. We don't have to be a mattress recycling facility. We don't have to be an electronics recycling facility. We don't have to do hazardous waste. We don't have to accept acceptage. The mattress recycling pays enough for the staff time to load the trailer. And it keeps the streets cleaner. Yeah, I don't the know electronics, we don't get anything from electronics. So we don't do anything yeah. either. We have a bin. I pick up the phone once in a while and call them and tell them to come and pick it up. Other than that, when people bring it, they put it in the bin, that's the end of that. It's a no cost, essentially no cost for the district. But it keeps TVs and electronics off the side of the road. Keeps them out of the land. The septage, it's good for the companies. It makes the companies, or it helps the companies make money. It helps us make money. And as we grow and can provide more, or accept more rather, then it could be a revenue stream for the district to help offset the cost of running the wastewater treatment plant, which in turn would help stabilize or reduce rates to the community. The household hazardous waste, again, we don't have to do it, but there's no real capital cost for us. We can participate in it or not. If we give them space, they have a company that will have it open for the public and they will manage it. If we choose to, we can pick up stuff off the street, bring it there, log in, they take care of it. They have their own insurance, they have, they take care of all the costs for it. So again, it's a very tiny cost to the district itself, but it's a huge benefit to this area. When I drive to work, there is continuously things on the side of the road that presumably if somebody had a place that they could take it and nobody would ask any questions about it, that it wouldn't be on the side of the road. Not necessarily, but no. I mean, there's, You're right, maybe not. There's, there's people that, I don't care if it's two blocks away, <clears throat> they'd rather take it out and dump it on Indian Valley Road. Yeah, so. But, you know, my, my hope and goal for this district is to bring things that make the district better, make the community better, and either help the district and the community financially, or at least help the community, but don't cost the district anything. So it's, it's really hard to make those, that distinction of whether it's, it's beneficial or not when it doesn't cost anything, but it's helping the district. Well, helping the community as much. You said you said about the, uh, the the sewage trucks dumping stuff and everything. There's probably between five and six trucks that go in there almost every day down there. And you said that we're we're the only treatment plant in the county. You said this that take that stuff. I'm not aware of another one in this county that will take it. That's what I'm saying. So why why should we take it? Apparently, there's a reason why they're. They're not taking it. So, so I don't think we're any smarter than any of the other ones. Well, yeah. you know, it's debatable, but 
the the only the closest place that I'm aware of that'll take it is St. Maria. They're yeah. going to I'm going to take it down there. That's where they do take it. Or they take it to Sullivan. Or they take it out to Lost Hills. Not really my problem. It is but your problem if, if you're receiving uh, sewer material from every place in San Luis County. So we require them to log where it came from. We, re we require testing of material at our, at our discretion. Yeah. And we restrict how much can be brought. We're not going to jeopardize our treatment plan to help somebody else make money. So, yep. although we are the only one, and I, you know, if the board decided, hey, you know, we definitely don't want to do this ever, and we don't want to have that revenue stream, then, you know, at the board's direction, then that would be good. Okay. Thank but the, the reality is, is it is a revenue stream. It does help businesses in our area. And, you know, although there is a risk, it's a mitigated risk, and it's really borne by the, the company bringing it to us. I would venture to say that you could probably double the amount that you charge to them, and they would still bring it because there isn't anything else around. And from what I understand, Paso Robles did receive that years ago, but they had a very complex mechanical whatever, whatever. Yeah, and very, very complex system that wasn't managed very well and didn't work, so they right. decided to stop the program. Right, right. So just because we're the smart <coughs> ones doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that we try a little harder to help our community and to help others, and we're making money. It's a no-brainer. If it's yep. a All respects. I'm so sorry. If it's making money, if it's making money, it's not financing for this district, and if a large cycle chunk of this community is still on septic tanks, which they are, and the sewer, the septic to sewer conversion has not happened in this community, it seems like that program would actually benefit people in this community. And not only that, we're off topic. It has, we're not talking about that, we're talking about the... Yeah, we're off topic. We need to go on into this, and we're going to be here until 11 o'clock right. tonight discussing it. Um, next up is going to be Fire Chief Report. Good evening, Board. Uh, my report is submitted as written. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Director Collins? I have no questions at this time. None for myself either. None for me. Director Owens? No, I'm not. Okay. Thank you, Fire Chief. Appreciate it. Okay. Please public comment on all this. Anybody have any public comment? Please approach the lecture and sign in and address the board. Anybody? Any public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to consent calendar. The items listed below are scheduled for consideration as a group and one vote. Any director may request an item to be withdrawn from the consent agenda to discuss or to change the recommended course of action. Unless an item is pulled for a separate consideration by the board, the following items are recommended for approval without further discussion. Um, public comment. Thank you, board. Very, very well. Again, I would like to say that uh, item five shouldn't be in the consent. But does it send the consent? I'll speak. The million dollars came from the uh, grant that was given to the county for $7.6 million. So it's a GSA item. It's not a consent item. And it should be under the GSA stuff. Uh, I don't have a problem with you guys getting a million dollars. I think that's great. I just think the money should be spent on something that's more constructive that is going to help you. If, if, if the water where you're delivering it right now gives you zero benefits, then a million dollars should have been used to make sure that that water went somewhere where it did give you benefit. If something's percolating too fast and it's just leaving, then all the nasty stuff that's in it is going with it and creating another problem somewhere else. And I don't understand how if 
with with all the stuff that um, your general manager, Mr. Dodds, and thank you very much for our conversation today. Um, who's blending the water when it, when it gets to these vineyards and stuff? Do they have credentials to blend the water? Or once it leaves your place, it's plenty good, you just mix fresh water with it and it's fine. And now it's no longer recharged, it's irrigation. So they're going to check the, that through a thing called ET, evapotranspiration. The evapotranspiration is going to measure what's been applied that's evaporating off of the plant and the soil. So there's not very much that's going back to the soil, so it's not being used to recharge. So when you pump it, you charge your people. They dump it, you charge your people. Now you're going to clean it and send it and then maybe someday they'll get a benefit. And then these other guys are getting a $3 million pipeline to irrigate their, their vineyards, and the one company makes $82 million a year. This is unbelievable to me. I don't know how that benefits the basin or the people of the basin or what the whole project is about. It's called the Sustainability Groundwater Management Act to manage the basin, not to manage the vineyards, not to manage wastewater plants, not to manage it's supposed to return, clean, and use, and benefit the basin and the people that live over the basin. So, that, my thing, this water is leaving your CSD to what I understand, and if these guys can use it, cool. If you couldn't use it, that'd be fine. But I just don't think that this is a good way to spend a million dollars of uh, grant money, which is other people's money, OPM, other people, other tech people's money, to spend on something. Thank you. Okay, Director, I want you to have some items that you want to remove from the uh, Yes, uh, I would like to uh, pull up. Uh, oh, who's public comment? Oh, that's a man. He's got more public comment. Well, you want my head? I mean, to talk to you. I don't know. Come on ahead. I'm going to pull the ones that you're probably going to argue that shouldn't be on the uh, consent calendar, correct? Uh, well, actually, I just want to clarify something on here. So, item number five on consent is this uh, recycled pipeline project. You go down in, the, in page, uh, I believe, 76 of your agenda. I can't believe this again, it's 360 page items, but any of that. So 9.3 is also about this item. So why do we have a consent item here, and then on 9.3, we're going back and revisiting this whole item that, that also talks about the bid. So, what are we doing here? 9.3 is conflict of interest. I'm sorry? 9.3 is conflict of interest code. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, 9.5. 9.5 is uh, one of those. Yeah. Okay. So, We're all talking the same. So, I don't understand what, the, what number five, what's the purpose of number five? Because 9.3, and the other problem is, if you look at uh, page two of your uh, agenda, not, uh, item nine doesn't list, and there's several 9.1234.5 items, and when you go down, if you want to search far enough into the 70s and 80s pages for these items, and none of them are listed on here up at the beginning. You know, there's, this this whole agenda thing needs to get um, improved, uh, improved on. That's my point. Thank you. Any other public comment? Director Lawrence? Yes. Okay. I'm making a motion to pull item number five from the consent calendar okay. for more clarification. Yeah, other ones you want to pull also? Because we'll want to pull. You want to yeah. voice that you want to pull all the ones that you want to pull. Okay, number five, okay. number three, number six, and number eight. So number three, number five, number six, and number eight. Yeah. Uh, the consent count. 
Right. Okay. So I need a motion on one, two, four, seven, nine. Okay. And seven. All right. Other page. Other page. All right. I'll motion to approve one, two, four, seven, nine, and ten of the consent calendar. I need a second. I'll second it. I have a motion on the floor to approve by Director Gregory to approve consent calendar item 9.1, 9.2, 9.4, 9.7, 9.9, .9, and 9.10. Second by Director Calvins. I have a vote. Director Davis? Yes. Director Gregory? Yes. Director Calvins? Yes. Director Smiley? Yes. Passes four. Zero with one absent. Now we'll talk about three. Nine point three. Uh, nine point three is the San, San Luis Terrace SLT so well. No, nine point three consent calendar. Oh, consent calendar. Okay. Sorry. Number three is the amended district's conflict of interest code resolution twenty twenty four dash thirty three. So this is the review. So review and approve an amendment to the current the current policy and adopt resolution 2024-33. As a follow-up action, staff will submit for the conflict of interest code a review and updated designated positions listed to the San Luis Obispo uh, Board of Supervisors. <coughs> the, the change amounts to the check title change between the board from board clerk account manager to a board clerk, board clerk executive assistant. That's the only change. Right, yeah. This is something that we have to do on a regular basis. It's required <coughs> for us to, for the board to review our the titles and to adopt um, Adopt new a new resolution with new titles if titles have changed or positions have been added. Mm -hmm. It's like who does the 700 form? It, it's, right. it's financial conflict of interest for anyone who um, has uh, decision making authority. So the board members, as well as um, leadership, any employees who are allowed discretion to make certain decisions on their own are supposed to complete. 700 forms, and this conflict of interest policy is filed with the county and then also with the FPV, submitted to the FPVC, so that they keep track of who is required to file the 700 forms every year. Great. And consultants as well, if they're allowed discretionary authority. For discussion? I don't have any comment about that. <coughs> Director Calvis? It's not a lot. Pardon? It's a law. Nothing for me, Director Holmes. It's basically uh, record keeping or uh, housekeeping. Yeah. Director Davis. We're on three. We're on yeah. nine point consent calendar number three. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make sure. And that's a, that's basically when you change titles for someone, right, which you've done in the past. Correct? So this, this particular instance is the title change from board clerk account manager to board clerk executive assistant, which was a contract. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. That's what I thought it was. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Public comment. Well, yeah, I, Thank you, sir, for that. Great, great, great. Um, so, 9 .3. number three. Okay. <laughs> number three. So, Form 700. Yeah. Hey, Form 700, and I'm going back to Vino Farms, who's part of EPC. What? No, no, no. Are you talking about? No. You said we're on, consent, consent, we're on a consent calendar. Yes, consent calendar. The conflict of interest. Conflict of interest code, which deals with Form 700, correct? For, for this jurisdiction specifically, not any other. No. Okay. Um, you're doing a pipeline for somebody out of this jurisdiction that has a conflict of interest that paid money to the people who made that decision 
who sit on the board who gave a million dollars. This is my problem because nobody's looked at the connections between who's benefiting and the money they pay to people that sit on the GSA board with these different groups that decided without public comment at those meetings how this uh, $7.6 million was going to be divvied up and who's benefiting from it. You know, farms gives a lot of money to the 460s and the different things, not declaring that they're part of Turnitin and his bank, who's the chairman of the board of the GSAs, where you got a seat, where the now $7 million comes to your group because these different people, and one of the other guys on that board, I don't need to mention his name, received $52,000 this last year from them. So all of these things are connected because everybody's part of this group. And the group is called the cooperative group, except they don't cooperate with the other landowners, just with themselves, on how to divvy up everybody else's money. And they don't disclose their connections and, and why the benefits are going to them. So, um, you might not think it's part of this, but it really is part of this because you're getting money out of it. And they're not disclosing why they're giving it to you. And who's connected because of who lives next to you where the water's going. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, can I get a vote on the floor for 9.1? Or 9.3, sorry. Um, I just want to say real quick that uh, if there are complaints about another agency not following their 700 forms, then that person should make a complaint regarding that 700 form process. If there are issues involving this agency, working with other agencies, and conflicts of interest, that can be discussed under our APA negotiations, under our DSA item. Uh, finally, they think the question is regarding this is whether or not anyone on this board or even any staff members who are designated by positions, sorry, I've done board clerk training, uh, has taken any financial uh, incentives personally, and that is what is needs to be disclosed, whether it is a gift or anything else of any materi material value. As far as I'm aware of, I'm not aware of anyone that has done that. I could be wrong, but this board, at least I haven't taken any money from anybody. So I am motion to approve this, but this is the law and we have to get it done. I'll second. Is that a, yeah, is that a motion? Yeah, it's a motion. Please don't add the rest of that stuff. Okay, Calvin and Gregory. I have a motion on the floor to approve the district's conflict interest code by resolution 2024-33 by Director Calvin, signed by Director Gregory. Director Calvin? Yes. Director Gregory? I've got a question. Yes. I've got a question. I requested these items be pulled. Yeah, so we're gonna go through each one. That's what we're doing yeah. right now. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we're on, yeah we're, on, we're on number three. 9.3 and that's yeah, all that's we're, what we're on. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's what we've been discussing. Hey, Gregory? Yes. Davis. No. Smiley. Yes. Passes three, one, 